here at Mukono Zadi, we are leading a youth empowerment project to support youth use narrow technologies to improve their businesses. The youth that are doing business of poultry are having challenges with feed. They are also having challenges with disease management. So we are now putting together these videos to address some of the issues that we have got from the youth as we've been interacting with them to see how we can help our youth on how to improve their businesses and also to help them be more climate resilient. Uh, where we are in Chikoko Mixed Farm, uh, which deals with in rare go poultry, pinks and goats. Uh, under normal circumstances, birds which are normal look active. Once the birds look dull and they are not playful and they don't respond to feed quickly, they will also be sluggish in their movement. Then that's an indication that birds are not in a good state of health. The appearance also matters. If the combs are not well colored, the combs are going to look pale and they'll have what we call a rough plumage or rough coat. The feathers are not going to look nice then you can tell that my birds are not in normal situation. Uh, the stool uh, is also another indicator. A bird is supposed to produce the droppings which are consistent with basically two colors, either black and, and white on top, what you call uric acid. But the moment you see that uh, the stool is, is watery, since it's brownish in color, that can be an indicator of certain diseases like uh, coccidiosis. And if you see white, pieces mixed up with green whatever, green matter, can be an indicator of Newcastle disease. There are quite a number of diseases that affect birds in Uganda, but these ones are categorized in two different uh, categories. For example, I've got protozoan diseases, I've got bacterial diseases, and viral diseases. Viral diseases include Newcastle disease, which is a major, uh, then we have uh, full typhoid, uh, we have Malix, and then Gomboro, just to mention a few. Vaccination is the administering of a vaccine into the bird's body to improve its body immunity. When we are going to vaccinate, we make sure that you vaccinate against viral diseases because they are not treatable. But the bacterial ones, uh, even if you don't vac do not vaccinate, they can have a treatment. Before administering any vaccine, you have to ensure that your bird is in good health. Because the moment you see that the birds have already, have already started showing signs of ill health, at the moment you introduce the vaccine, you are going to downplay the immune system of the bird and then the birds are going to succumb to the disease. And then secondly, uh, you have to obtain vaccines from a recognized source so that uh, you can have viable vaccines. And then uh, most of the vaccines are moved in a cold chain. You know, you put your, your, your vaccine in two direct sunlight. As you are administering them, you keep it in a cold chain throughout to ensure that uh, you maintain the temperatures. And then make sure that you follow a hygiene protocol so that you don't bring about problems of malfunction. The diseases that they are mostly vaccinated against are Malix, which is done at day old. Uh, it can be repeated at day 10. And then it's done through the injection subcutaneously or under the skin around the neck region of the bud. Then uh, Newcastle is done at one day and then can be repeated four weeks. And then 16 weeks and repeated every after four months. It's done by using one or two drops in the eye or in the nostrils of the bird. Then infectious bronchitis is vaccinated against at three weeks every after seven weeks by dropping one or two drops in the eye or the nostrils. Fourpox is vaccinated against at two, six weeks and then uh, it's a fracture in the wing web. And then Gomboro is done at two weeks and then repeated at six weeks 
uh, through the mouth or the eye, eye drop. And then for typhoid is done at 12 weeks, it's injected into the breast muscles of the bird. We know as narrow that we cannot be everywhere. So we are working with local government officers, extension officers. We are working with NGOs and the community-based organizations that are doing extension services. But we also want to encourage you, the youth, to learn from one another. We will look forward to receiving feedback from you for educational purposes and to learn more. We want to request you to like our videos, download them, and subscribe to our TikTok and Twitter handles.